Hey everybody, I'm Stacy Lynn and I am making Black Eyed Pea Gumbo, one of my absolute favorites from my latest book, Stacy Lynn's Harvest Cookbook. So this gumbo is so amazing and it's different. I added a Southern flair with the Black Eyed Peas and it's already a fusion type recipe because you've got the different um, groups like American Indian, the French, um, West African, and now I'm bringing a little bit of Southern in here, which we already had from Louisiana. And I'm going to be making it with filet powder, which is from sassafras leaves. And we found ours out in the woods and dried them upside down in our basement. And we have got plenty of filet. So I'm going to make it into filet powder by just crushing it up. And then it's going to be the thickener for my gumbo. So the next thing I'm going to do, or the first thing I'm going to do, is brown my sausage. So I have andouille sausage right here, and I'm gonna add a little bit of oil into my pot. I think, <laughs> here we go. All right, and heat that up a little bit. Hopefully that'll, there we go. All right, and then I'm gonna add the sausage. Now you'll notice that I have two pots out here. Well, when I make gumbo, I make a lot. So I'm just gonna add this in batches and get it browned, and then I'm going to put it on a cooling rack or a cookie rack over a sheet pan um, to when I'm finished with it before it goes back in while I'm making the roux. All right, so the reason that I'm doing this part first, you could start with the roux first, but the reason that I'm starting with this first is that I want the flavor of the sausage when I'm making my roux. I want it all incorporated and it is gonna be so good. I can already smell this. This is like just intoxicating. So there are two categories of gumbo and there's a big fight about it everywhere just kind of like the same thing as stuffing and dressing and you know the different areas are just so different but the two categories are what to use as a thickener do you use filet or do you use okra and of course you'll have the thickener being the roux as well but I prefer to add both okra and filet because filet has a really great earthy flavor um, you can, the flavor of it is so good, and okra does too, but it also adds a different kind of texture to the entire dish. So I like adding both. I don't have any okra right now. Um, I usually, my garden produces so much okra, but this year, um, I'm not exactly sure what happened, but it didn't grow quite as well as it has in the past, so we ate it all already. So I'll just be using the filet, but there's just a big cultural divide as far as do I use filet or do I use okra? Tell me in the comments what you use. I would surely love to know. All right, so I've got this and I will be doing this in batches. So I'm going to brown all of my sausage and then I'm gonna brown my chicken. Okay, I'm removing all of the, the whole first batch or the second batch of the sausage. And so it's gotten nice and done and browned and it's using those, it's leaving those really beautiful bits of meat on the bottom of my pan and it's gonna be so good. All right, so try to get all of that out of here. So turn down my heat just a hair and then I'm gonna brown my chicken. Okay. Now some people will put in shredded chicken from a whole chicken that they've roasted before but I really like mine in chunks, or actually Scott likes his in chunks. Okay, so I'm gonna get this brown, and then I'm gonna remove it and do the same thing with the rest of the chicken. Now, in different places, um, hunters especially will use pheasant, uh, they'll use turkey and duck in their gumbo, and we do it all the time. If we have extra duck or even dove at times, we will just put different meats inside the gumbo and it's just fantastic. So we may not use, we always use the sausage 
and um, and most of the time use the fish. We've got shrimp and redfish going in this particular gumbo, but you can make it with you know duck and, and sausage. You can have a turkey and sausage. You can just do just about anything you want to, depending on your lifestyle. So I'm gonna let this brown, get browned nicely on the bottom, and then I'm gonna remove it to the pan and do the same thing with the other part. Now, if your pan gets too dry, just add a little bit more oil to the pan. All right, so I think we're ready to remove the browned chicken. All right, and it's best to do this in small batches to where it browns as opposed to steams. Mine kind of steamed a little bit here. I put too much in at one time, but it's not gonna matter that much. So in just a minute, I'm gonna get to make the roux. All right, the roux is the crux of the entire dish to me besides the filet. I think the filet plays a very, very important part in gumbo. All right, now it's time for the roux. So I've got all of these great flavors going on in here. Now I'm going to add a whole cup of vegetable oil. Some people use peanut oil. You don't want to use anything that has a low um, heat point where, you know, it burns. You need an oil that is not going to burn. Okay, so it's pretty hot. I'm going to go back to using my wooden spoon and I've just got flour here. So it's equal parts one cup of oil and one cup of flour. All right, so we are gonna cook this until it starts to really get nice and brown. Okay. You can use a whisk if you like to get it um, really good and smooth, but after the whisk, I really like to use the figure eight uh, shape inside there with a wooden spoon just to keep it going but you can use the whisk the entire time just making sure I've still got it on pretty high heat all right that's looking good okay make sure there's no flour in the corners all right here we go all right, so now you'll kind of know when it starts getting thick and a little bit um, just really thick and brown, you'll know that that's probably the time to stop and add the rest of what you're going to add. Okay, I'm just going to let this go for about five minutes and I'm going to add my um, vegetables to this before I add the stock and, and the meat back in and, and my spices and all of that. So when I add the vegetables back in, I'm gonna want them to get translucent and the flour and the oil is still gonna continue to cook. So it's still gonna kind of darken. So I might put that in before my roux gets to be really, really dark. I have it over high heat right now and that's why I keep changing hands. I'm not right-handed and when I do it this way, my eights are not as pretty as my <laughs> figure eights on the left hand. Okay. So we're having a big birthday bash. So I'm gonna be making, I'm not making double the recipe. I always make this much um, because you can freeze this. So you can freeze it up for, you know, up to about six months in the freezer. And when you thaw it, you just thaw it really slowly and over um, like a light simmer on the oven after it has um, thawed out in the refrigerator. And when you do that, it will still be just like really, really super great. If you're gonna freeze it though, which I'm not, I would have my, if I did the black eyed peas in it, and you don't have to do the black eyed peas in it, but um, we're doing dried black eyed peas today. Uh, it will soak up the water. You won't want to put quite as much of the stock in it. And the black eyed peas get a little bit mushy if you freeze those. So I would not put them in until the very end um, or, you know, until you thawed it out and then add a little bit of stock and then put some of the black eyed peas in. If you want to freeze it, I like to put a layer of rice at the bottom 
just a little bit and then to put some of the um, and, and individual portions and then to put my gumbo on top of that and then freeze it that way. All right, I am almost there to where I wanna put in the vegetables and let it continue to go. Now, a lot of people do this separate. A lot of people make the roux all on its own and then they, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put my vegetables in. I think I'll put some of the roux in the other pot. All right. go. I'm going to lower the heat just a little bit. All right, and I'm going to put, there we go. I'm going to turn this heat down just a hair. I'm going to put in half of my onions, and then I'm going to put the other half over here. I need to start the heat in that one. All right, and the roux is going to continue to get brown. Okay, I'm going to put half of my celery, and half of my celery, and half the bell peppers. There we go. Perfect. All right, and then I'm gonna just cook this until they are translucent. There we go. Look at that. Oh my, that is gonna be great. Okay, so it shouldn't take long at all for that to get translucent. Okay, so we are ready for the next step, which is to put in half of the sausage and chicken here. Okay, and then half over into the next pot. Okay, so of course you can cut this recipe in half um, if you like, if you just need one pot of gumbo. It's easier to make, I suppose, but I'm like, if you're gonna do all of this, you might as well make a lot and um, freeze it or have company because this is such a great dish for company, okay? All right, I'm gonna put some of these juices in here because um, they're just gonna add flavor. There we go. And the rest will go in here, okay? I'm gonna mix that up real quick. Okay, so next, comes the spices. All right, I wanna make sure that that is not sticking. Okay, turn that heat down just a little bit while I'm putting everything else in it. Okay, so I'm gonna put in the garlic. Nope, added too much garlic to that one, not enough to this one. And this, believe it or not, is 16 cloves of garlic. So I really like a garlicky gumbo. That already looks amazing. Okay, now I'm gonna add the rest of my spices. So I'm gonna add half the oregano in here and half oregano there, cayenne. And I have all of the specifics on, I have them on my website at stacylynharris.com, um, black eyed pea gumbo. Okay, and then I'm gonna put, I'm gonna give this just a quick stir just to get those spices incorporated. There we go. And then I'm gonna add the black eyed peas. So if you don't have black eyed peas, just don't, you know, just don't add them. All right, black eyed peas, and they're dried. Or you could make black eyed peas and add them at the very end, as I was saying earlier, if you wanna freeze it. Okay, I'm gonna mix that together and then I'm just gonna add my stock okay I think I'll add a little bit of salt okay with the peas you have to add just a little bit more salt so I'm gonna add a tablespoon or so to each and give that a quick stir can you just imagine how great this is gonna be all right and then I'm gonna add stock so I'm adding four quarts of stock. Add two quarts to one and two, two quarts to the other. All right, so I'm gonna let this go for about an hour. 
and I'm going to keep stock handy just in case it gets dry, which it will because I have these dried, um, these dried peas in here. And so it will get dry. If you're using frozen, you will only use probably two quarts of stock instead of the four. All right, so I'm going to keep my eye on this. I'm going to let it go simmer uncovered for one hour. And then I'm going to be adding the fish, the filet, and the shrimp. And it is going to be spectacular, y'all. I can't wait. I'll see you in just a little bit. So it's been an hour. And I want you to look at this and how it looks before I put in the seafood. It's, it's thick, you know, the thickener or the roux did a great job. And I'm about to add the wonderful sassafras leaves or filet. So there you go, and you're getting to see all of the yummy goodness in there, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is add the shrimp and the fish. And this is only gonna take a few minutes. So I'm gonna let this continue to cook for about a minute and a half to two minutes, and then I'm gonna turn the heat off and just let the residual heat cook the shrimp and the fish, okay? So it's on like low right now, heat, and I'm just gonna leave it on that because the temperature will drop inside the pots. Okay, there we go, and the redfish is great. And my husband wanted to use um, catfish, and that would have been great too, but we had redfish, so we just decided we would use that. So I'm just gonna nestle all of that fish down in the rest of this awesome gumbo. Okay, and now I'm gonna put in the filet. So I had the leaves, like I was telling you earlier, um, in my basement, and I was just getting them nice and ground and dried. So I've been, put, I put a little salt in here so it would have something coarse to kind of hold on to. And you can crumble it with your hands as well. And it's not gonna be exactly like powder. You can buy filet powder if you'd like to. But if you can find sassafras leaves, hey, why not make your own? So this will break it up really, really well. And I'm going to just sprinkle it over the top um, of both of these dishes. This is going to be so good, making it really, really thick and tasty. And I do so wish I had okra. It would be so good in this. But the filet is going to be great, too. So, and it's just going to give it that amazing um just that taste that you can just get from nothing else besides filet. All right, so I've got some parsley. I'm gonna keep a little bit of parsley back for when I plate it, but I'm gonna put equal parts of parsley. I didn't have a whole lot. I would like to probably put a little bit more, although one of my sons does not like parsley. He doesn't hate the flavor, but he says he doesn't like the texture, but he's not even gonna know. And then I'm gonna put some of the onions. So I like green onions. I think it adds a touch of, of greatness. I'm going to keep some for the top for garnish and put the rest inside here. Now I've also got a jalapeno for garnish and I know my guys like it really spicy hot. So we have some Tabasco to go on top of that. So I'm going to just put, just stir this up just a little bit and then I'm going to turn off the heat and let this sit for just a few minutes. And then we're gonna have the best gumbo ever. Look at how good that looks. And I'm really glad that I did not make the chicken um, into shredded pieces. There's nothing wrong with that. I just feel like it's a lot meatier and I like the texture better when it isn't, when you don't have um, shredded meat in it. I do like stews that way, and I love uh, a lot of casseroles like that, but my gumbo, I just like it to be really meaty. All right, so now it's time to plate this up. Okay, turn the heat off on both of these, and then we're gonna plate it up. So I've got some long grain rice in both of these bowls, and I thought this bowl was really cool, and you know, I wish they made some like this like for big crowds, like you could get 25 or 50, you know, bowls like this, which would be just so great if they were paper. Um, and you could, you know, do this outside. I cooked chili outside last night, um, and this would be perfect, you know, to serve outside. 
All right, so I just put some rice down in the bowl that I have made a little bit earlier. And now I'm just gonna fill it up with this awesome gumbo. Y'all, if you could just be here, it smells so, so good. Look at that, okay? So there, somebody's gonna get a really big helping of gumbo there. And another more elegant way probably to serve this would be just to add the gumbo around the rice or on top of it, whichever you prefer when you're using a big, a big, uh, uh, you know, serving sp spoon, whichever you wanna call that too. All right, so anyway, but you could make that prettier by putting a little bit more, um, more of the rice on top of that. But anyway, then just sprinkle some peppers, I mean, not peppers. So just sprinkle a few onions and a little bit of parsley. And then I like to go over it with a little bit of olive oil and a dash or two of hot pepper. All right, or you could put a little red pepper flakes in that, that would be great. And for you that love heat, you can put a couple of jalapenos in here, just spread them out throughout and you have got it made. So I cannot wait to go feast, probably not on both of these bowls of gumbo, but at least one, I'm gonna feast on that. I am so happy. I cannot tell you how great it smells in this kitchen. I hope you will go and get the ingredients to make this gumbo. And if you have leftovers, freeze it. Just know when you thaw it out, you need to thaw it out very, very slowly in the refrigerator and then warm it on a simmer very, very slowly. Don't microwave it and don't put it on high. Just simmer it until it's just hot enough. And then that's it. And then you'll have gumbo all year long. So do it in individual containers so that you can get it out and make it as you go because you won't want to continue to reheat that because of the seafood. So y'all have a great day and subscribe to StacyLynnHarris.com. You can get the recipe at StacyLynnHarris.com or you can get it in my book, Stacy Lynn's Harvest Cookbook. I'll talk to you soon.